something in us that likes the chaos, but we don't want to live in it. We don't want to live in it. If you live in it, you would develop what's called PTSD. We all know what that is. Yeah, post-traumatic stress disorder, because it comes not from, not from necessarily like the crazy experiences, but the inability to understand the meaning behind them. Because chaos, by its very definition, doesn't seem to have a meaning to it. There is no purpose to it. It's just, it happens. It's not predictable. And that's the worst kind of stuff for us. It's like suffering. Suffering is bad for us, but if you have a meaning and a purpose in it, you're okay with it. It's when suffering seems to have no meaning and no purpose that it's terrible for us. You know, like when like we ask that question, why do, you know, kittens get hit by cars and, and why do, you know, grandparents get cancer? And we're, and we're always asking that question because we're looking for a meaning in things. We're looking for an order in things. Like you won't just walk in here and go like, hey, Scott, I was wondering, what, can people change? The only reason you actually ask that question or wonder that question is because there's somebody in your life who you really, really hope is going to change. A person who is an alcoholic or a person who is harming you or harming themselves or a person who you know, is, is constantly depressed, maybe all of those things and maybe that is you. And that's because we're looking for there to be some kind of an answer, some kind of a meaning, some kind of a clear thing order to things. So there's chaos in, 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 in your life. There's chaos with a hurricane headed for Florida. There's chaos with one that was already there. Now that hurricane, how do we know it's going there? Because it's predictable. We can see where it started. We can see the progression of it. We can see the ones that already hit there. They're, they're, they're predictable, roughly. Because sometimes you hear about that, like, oh, Category 5 is about to hit Florida. And then by the time it makes landfall, it's like a Category 2. And they're like, well, we dodged a bullet there. And that's, that's why I think I probably didn't think, I probably don't take it too seriously because I'm always hearing about that. Remember that, the tornado, wasn't it? That tornado that ripped through San Diego a couple years ago? Tornado? Oh, yeah. You remember this? Yes, you remember the tornado, right? Yeah. It, like, knocked in a lawn chair. <laughs> yeah, it was bad, but we, we rebuilt. We bravely rebuilt. Because we're always hearing about stuff like that. How many of you guys, by the way, when you heard about the hurricane, you were like, yes, yeah. How many of you hid in your closet <laughs> and just covered up your eyes and said, no hurricane, I said, no tornado, no tornado. Seriously, was anybody else excited by the idea of a, of a tornado? How many of you got even more excited when you found out it wasn't like in National City, but it was gonna be a few miles away? And then you were like, cool, I wanna see what this thing does. Oh, that's right, huh? We had a weather lockdown, right? That's right, we had a weather lockdown because of, of, a, of the tornado. That's right, that never landed. But then we say, but you know what? It's, it's, it's better to be safe than sorry. I don't know, though. Is it? Is it? Because what did we learn? I think we should open up the campus. We can learn something about everybody. If you're the kind of person who wants to hide, stay in the room. If you want to see some cool shit, come on out. <laughs> I think we find out about some people that way. My point is that the chaos is, 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 the chaos is exciting. We like chaos. Chaos is the thing that adds a little salt to, the, to, the, to, to, to life. How many of us like watching fights, even though the people here can't fight? You know, these, all these big windmill things like this, you know? I, I mean, I watched, I, I watched it, I, I damn near watched a murder on Saturday where I was um, at a, a Muay Thai event here in, in National City and I was, I was emceeing it, so I was like, making the announcements for the, for the fighters. And I like to use the word fighters loosely because they're anywhere from age five up to, I think the oldest one was like 50, was like 25. But most of them were, were, like, were kids, you know? And there's, so I'm, I'm announcing these fighters, I'm like, you know, that next fighter, like six years old, you know? <laughs> Wearing big old headgear, big gloves are too big for them and shin guard, they're like, they walk out there like, like, like marshmallow people, you know? <laughs> But this one girl, she's one of my jujitsu students, and <laughs> she's eight. And I go, I go, hey, you know, good fight today. And she, and she's just staring. She just says, that other girl is doomed. <laughs> I'm like, okay, all right, well, you know, good fight, have fun. Remember, no winners or losers. You just, you know, <laughs> give you your best. And I, I watched. She, she goes straight in, and she just starts throwing straight punches. Like her, like her hands have, have, like, you know. Um, uh, air tags on them, you know? Everything is finding its mark. And this other girl is on the outside just, just hedges, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and she's doing this. 
on the outside, I have a video of it. I probably shouldn't, but it's damn funny since no one died. And she's doing this like on the outside. And the other girl is just wah, 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 like walking her around the ring, like dog walking her around the ring. And then the other poor girl ends up in the corner. And then the other girl is just ba 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 ba, like, like she's hitting a, a, a bag. And then the round ends. Ding. It's only, and it's only a minute. I watched this beating go on, which felt like for half an hour. It's only it's only one minute. <laughs> and then they tell my my student uh, her name is her name is Jennifer, but it's with a Y, so I call her Jennifer with a Y. And uh, and, and they tell her, hey, could you not you know don't you know you're better. We know this. Please don't kill her. Just work with her now. The next because it was three rounds. Just work with her. Just work with her. So she like looks at me like, like coach, do I kill him? I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, I walked away at that point. I don't want to have any, any, any input. Cause my feeling is you want to be a warrior, treat him like a warrior, but she ends up, there you go. But anyway, there was, we, we, there's a, there's a certain chaos that's there. Cause I mean, there were a lot of people there, man. I mean, I, I mean, I guess, I guess screw the fire marshal, man. There were, they, we were way over capacity in, in that place. There were a lot of people there and why? Because there were a lot of fight. We like watching fights. If I had a book reading, how many would have shown up for the book reading? One person reading the book. <laughs> That's it. And we could have live streamed it. Been like three viewers all over the world <laughs> watching this thing. But as soon as you put a fight in there, as soon as you put some chaos in there, ah, we want to watch it. Because what are we hoping for when we see the chaos? Hmm? <laughs> what is it? The same thing that we're hoping for, by the way, when we see the cheerleaders. What is it? Blood. Blood. Right? How many, okay, no, sorry, not you guys. How many of you guys have friends that when you're watching the cheerleaders and they, they launch them up, you're like, you want to see them fall and get hurt? Not too bad, but a little bit, a little bit. I know, I know, I'm sorry. None of you guys, I understand this, you're friends though, right? Yeah. Why? Because that's interesting to us. I don't think anyone was hoping I would die. When you throw the cheerleader up, we don't want them to die. And, you know, we, we, and, and after, if they do fall, we feel bad about it. And if, if Jennifer with a Y had murdered this girl on Saturday, I would have testified for her that she was a good person. Because we don't want people to get hurt necessarily. But we like that, that spike of chaos, that oddness, that weirdness of life. We like to watch the fights out here. We don't really want someone to pull out a knife. I mean, well, that did happen two years ago, though. Yeah. Wait, what's that? Yes, a girl got her ass beat, and it was on video, and then, and then we'll call it what it was. And then the girl was walking away, and then the other one grabbed a knife and chased her down. <laughs> yeah, boy, yeah, yeah, boyfriend stopped her, but it was on video, unfortunately. And um, anyway, she, um, we, we, we like that idea of there being some kind of strangeness and chaos and weirdness because it breaks up the monotony of life. But there's something better about it when it's somewhat controlled. Like when you throw the cheerleader up in the air, is she gonna fall? Probably not. They've done this hundreds of times. They're very good at what they do. They're probably not going to. Um, when you see a fight, is someone gonna get hurt? There's a small possibility, but probably not. In other words, it's as, as unsafe as it seems, there's still some safeness that's there. When you see the tornado uh, you know, in, in San Diego somewhere, it's better when it's not run, you know, going right through Sweetwater High School. Yeah. If it's going through Sweetwater, our feeling is very different. And so we like it, we enjoy it. Because there's something in us that likes the chaos, but we don't wanna live in it. We don't wanna live in it. If you live in it, you would develop what's called PTSD. We all know what that is. Yeah, post-traumatic stress disorder, because it comes not from not from necessarily like the crazy experiences, but the inability to understand the meaning behind them. Because chaos by its very definition doesn't seem to have a meaning to it. There is no purpose to it. It's just, it happens, it's not predictable. And that's the worst kind of stuff for us. It's like suffering. Suffering is bad for us, but if you have a meaning and a purpose in it, you're okay with it. It's when suffering seems to have no meaning and no purpose that it's terrible for us. You know, like when like we ask that question, why do, you know, kittens get hit by cars and, and why do, you know, grandparents get cancer? And we're, and we're always asking that question because we're looking for a meaning in things. We're looking for an order in things. We're in, in a minute, we're going to read an article called Can People Change? And the article is going to begin by telling us 
we will ask that question, not usually out of nowhere. Like you won't just walk in here and go like, hey, Scott, I was wondering what, can people change? The only reason you actually ask that question or wonder that question is because there's somebody in your life who you really, really hope is going to change. A person who's an alcoholic or a person who is harming you or harming themselves or a person who you know, is, is constantly depressed, maybe all of those things and maybe that is you. In other words, it's a real question that people have. You don't just ask it out of nowhere. And that's because we're looking for there to be some kind of an answer, some kind of a meaning, some kind of a clear th order to things. But here's the rub. With no chaos, you don't have anything, you don't have beautiful art, largely. <coughs> you have some, of course. But a lot of that stuff comes from pain. And a lot of, a lot of beautiful things can come from it. Empathy, understanding, what can you do with, with disorder? You can put it into order. In other words, think about your life. If your life is in chaos, what can you do? You can live in the chaos, but not for long. Nobody survives the chaos for very long. I was talking last period about it. Um, you go to a concert. Anybody go to concerts here? Yeah, and you go to concerts, and people typically will dress at concerts in ways they wouldn't normally dress in real life. They go there and they, and we don't, there's a reason that concerts are, are at night and not, not at 2 p.m. Because the evening is when weird shit happens. And you go to a place that's dark usually and you're with a bunch of other people who are out late, after dark, dressed in weird ways, listening to music that incites us emotionally. And you let all of that order go. And you're living in a space that for a few hours that is just pure chaos driven by music, something emotional, primal, beats, movement, shouting, screaming, and then afterwards you stumble away, and maybe you lost your voice, and you go and you eat tacos, and you sit there and go, that was fun. And you go home and you went to the next one. That's because you get to leave and go home to the order. The artist who you went to go watch, where do they go? To the next one, next day. New city, new crowd, same experience. And then after that, same thing. New city, new crowd, same experience. And the artists are the ones who live in chaos. And that's because these are the ones who go out and they make order out of chaos. How many notes, how many musical notes are there, 12? They take those musical notes out of the ether, they arrange them into a song, they put a beat to it, and then they release it, and then we connect with it emotionally. We love it, even if we can't explain why. That's because they've taken chaos and they've made order out of it. Anybody in here a dancer? Think about how many, how many ways you can move the human body. It's a seemingly infinite number of ways and you take all of that disorder of movement and you make it into a beautiful <coughs> dance. Any painters in here? You take paints that sit on a palette in some chaotic order and you make a painting out of it. You create order out of chaos. And sometimes the best art that you can make is your own life. Maybe you're a person who lives in chaos. You were born into chaos. You were raised in chaos, perhaps. Or even you're just in a chaotic place. And you can somehow take that and make order out of it. It's still chaotic. Still chaotic, though. Think about what it is to be a dancing star. Um, anybody ever seen any like, videos of the, of the sun? Like, like they're almost real-time videos? They're crazy. It is crazy. The sun is not just a ball that sits out there and is hot. It is undulating, it's moving constantly. It's plasma, it's not a solid thing, it's plasma. And in that plasma you see fires exploding, you see things moving all over the surface of it. And yet from a far enough distance, it looks like it's ordered. But the closer you get to it, you realize the, the, the chaos that it is. And there's some extremely weak but somehow manageable force called gravity that keeps it all together. And so, I don't know. Sometimes it's worth asking yourself, what is that, that, gravity of, that gravity of your life that's keeping that chaos of that star that's in you together? Because there's probably something, whatever, you know, figuring out what it is, because then you can nourish it, nourish it. And if you guys know much about gravity, gravity is an incredibly weak force. It really is. But somehow 
it still manages to hold together the universe and stars. So maybe finding out what that, what that gravity is that holds your life together. So, questions, comments, concerns, complaints, criticisms, critiques? Happy Tuesday-ish. Mm. Mm.